It is now time to draw a map off of everything that we've done. I have MS Paint open. You can see I have my pre-stretched, double-primed, 18 by 24 canvas. It is wet, slick, and ready to go. And we're here to build a society. A, at least a partially aquatic society. Uh, refry, greetings to the Living Guild Pact. Ooh, ooh, is that me? And hey, Golden, welcome. <laughs> yeah. It's all right, I ain't Jason you around. Now, using just the standard colors here. Nothing. Nothing extra fancy schmancy. Boom. I'm not even going to get into edit colors or anything. We're just going to use this right up here. We are going to we'll keep it basic and we'll keep it awesome and readable. Yep, do what you got to do, cat. Go on. Thank you for stopping by, but uh, attend to urgent matters. It, very white. We need some uh, th some uh, uh, phthalo blue. White. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. I mean, blue's my favorite color. I so I, I don't know what that says, but I guess. I'm not going to give up blue now, so oh well. <laughs> That's right. And you know, we're talking about volcanoes and whatnot. Uh, Phalo, if I recall correctly, and any artists out there, uh, if you do know, uh, correct me. Phalo is actually a blue based on sulfur. So something, something to think about. Uh, I, you, you know what? I, I, what I gotta do as well. We need to take a look at a couple cool things for inspiration. Uh, and, you know, for, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'd say for accuracy, but really it doesn't have to be just that. When you're doing this, do not be afraid to use references. All right, anyone who considers themselves an artist out there, will you absolve me of the mortal sin of using a reference for when I art? Anyone? Please forgive me. So, a couple things, if if we're doing some uh, geology, or I mean, this would cross over into Vulcanology 101. Nina says sacrilege. Oh, no. Nina. Nina, don't give up on me. Pardon. Volcanoes are mountains that spew gases and lava and heat. Um, and are also, you know, fun places for sacrifice. If a volcano falls dormant, you can have what's called a caldera lake form or a, like a crater lake. And things to look at are natural caldera that exist around the world because you'll get fun Arctic ones. Uh, you'll get uh, subtropical ones. Oh no, I know, uh, you got too excited here. We can have little islands in a caldera lake. It can be mostly dry. So here's a, here's a caldera. This actually has two smaller ones. Take a look at these colorful pools at Yellowstone.
Aren't these purdy? Everyone out there arting, never be ashamed to use references. References are good. We do not reference shame in this house. Very good. Thank you, Bewitchcraft. You're on it like a bonnet. And so it's up to us now. Do we... What kind of a... What kind of a caldera do we want to have? Uh, it could even be a bunch of shallow pools. The pools could even be connected by former lava tubes. Is that where the merfolk live? Is there is that the underground society where there are um, you know ma empty magma chambers uh, and lava tubes? You know, is there still some activity that uh, that occurs every now and again? So reference this stuff for color, for geography. You know how far uh, how far up is it? You know some of these, some of these calderas uh, aren't, you know, aren't two hundred feet down below. But of course, if we want a magnificent volcano, this is our volcano. It could be whatever the darn tootin' heck, H E C C we want. What is going to help you tell your story? What's going to help make sense for the people in the culture? Well, we have we have uh, two kind of well. One is a merfolk race, and the other is uh, I guess like half merfolk. I guess uh, in some capacity. Um, you know, do the merfolk travel through these uh, old channels? Now, of course, the ones that we rolled actually have uh, actually have legs. If we don't want them to have legs, they don't have to have legs. Statistically, mechanically, they have legs. Um, or maybe they, they have legs, but they just prefer to swim in the water, which, hey. Uh, MacArthur, says, uh, says Azrael, is that a, a caldera that you favor? <laughs> you can also get some super, like, super clear and purified water as it's gone through pumice and other natural filtration. Um, there's a whole big wide world out there in deserts, in frozen areas, in jungles, and pick what you want. So, Bewitchcraft and others have absolved you of the sin of using references. And so, we are going to use references in our map. Half merfolk, half fire genasi. And you know what? Just because we rolled a racial majority and a minority doesn't mean that those are the only two fantasy races that live there. If we have a portal to the Fire Realm or something, we may very well have Fire Genasi that live here too. Absolutely. Or you know what? Do you want to give your merfolk the extra benefit of having heat resistance like tieflings? Do it. It's your story. You'll account for it. I mean, you'll you'll make sure the challenge is still there. You know, at this stage in the game, we're dungeon masters planning for what we want to run for our friends. We are in full control and knowledgeable that, you know, we may have these characters that, you know, we'd have to deal a lot of fire damage to get any through. And that could happen. Now, remember, our prompts, our prompts were swamp and mountain. And I think we can combine this. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Dracus uh, Linoge? Linage? And also, is it Dracus or Dracus? Let me know how you want me to pronounce your name, and I will do my best to remember it and, and use it correctly. And if I don't, hey, correct me. I'm not going to take it personally. Aren't lava lakes normally extremely toxic? Possibly. Uh, some could if there are, you know, uh, radioactive elements or heavy metals or other things. Some of them could be very pure because the water has has already filtered. It, it sat there and it's, um, you know, it, it, it could even be anaerobic. So there's not even bacteria or algae because there's no oxygen in the water. It's still water, but it might not support fish or, or some other life.
It's not, well, it's not necrotic resistance. And maybe, you know, maybe that's something that, you know, we, we don't have that because we're studying it or we want to adapt it because we do want to become more resistant. We have, uh, we have a lot to consider here. Uh, so for purposes of our map, right, we have our blank canvas. Let's get going. Let's make a mountain. Let's make a caldera. Our two major biomes are mountain and swamp. Doesn't mean we can't have forest or open farmland or other things like that. We can. We can put a little snow on the top of the mountain if we want to. That's art. That could be Arctic, quote unquote. Um, and that's fine. But we're going to concentrate on these two. Skeleens, skeleens everywhere. Let's have a... We have a landscape. Let, let's tell a story. There once was a land that was grassland. And through the grassland, in order to maintain grass, aside from, you know, rains, we, we might be able to get a lot of rain too. We might have had some, uh, some kind of water. Some sort of a river. There could have been, even have been a lake uh, that happened. And we can even say that off on the side, there are some mountains that were helping to uh, supply that water. And this river flowed from the mountains, kind of wound its course, you know, make some little oxbow lakes and some other things here. Remember, water tells the story of, the, of your land as well. Water always is lazy and takes the, the path of least resistance. down here and you know there could be little tributaries and a bunch of other things but let's just focus on the main wiggler here keep your eyes on the prize the wiggly wiggly prize in fact we can even have a kind of like bow out like this and we'll put another little island there too and maybe here uh oh the river's gonna split and go this way now this might be hard to see i know this is light blue and light green Bear with me, everyone. I promise this will look a little bit better soon. Wait till I get my, my super lazy paintbrush uh, tool out. So we'll make a little oxbow here. There we go. Ta-da! And we can even draw in if we want that little island here. Bloop, 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 bloop. And there we go. It is important to make the sound effects and to even tell this story to yourself while you're drawing. Doing so, I find, can help you focus. And also, if you make a mistake, you don't feel bad about it because actually, now that you think about it, it's, it's cool. I never would have thought of doing that before. So it had to happen. And you know what? In a channel where we say it writes itself, you know what? This is going to draw itself. So we have we have some nice little uh, nice little water wigglers here of rivers coming down from a mountain and uh, and even spreading throughout the lands uh, carrying water hither and thither. So we have our rivers, and what happened was, over time, perhaps through degradation of the rock or soil, 
um, that could have been um, that could have been eroding sandstone or um, or other sedentary rock like limestone. And this could have even started then to depress this area. And it started to it started to sink. Yeah, this is bright green, isn't it? I, I, I'm sorry if this is hurting eyes here. Water over time will wear things down. <laughs> this could have then led for a weaker uh, a weaker area of rock that when the next time a seismic event happened, because look, how do we get mountains? Here's a couple ways. I want you to think of tectonic plates. Right? They're they're the, the wiggly solid parts that's floating on top of our mantle of uh, our middle layer of um, magma. Liquid hot magma. When two plates come together like this, you might get one that is dominant and will curve up and the other one buckles and goes down. And so you can get a mountain range this way where the rock subsumes into the mantle to become more magma. And then we have a mountain range being pushed up. That is the, uh, you know, that's the edge of the tectonic plate. And then of course, if there's fissures and we have more magma, it could even come up this way too. Both plates can simply buckle and both, uh, both might wrinkle a bit, but also go down. Uh, to create a different kind of mountain range. Both can collide and come up. Uh, something can happen where if there's an impact, then a mountain isn't necessarily created, but a pocket might fall through. Think about sinkholes. If there is some sort of heat melting and erosion as well, it could even like melt and sink from below. In our world, grass is gray. I mean, we, we want to change it gray. That's fine. So here we have our over time. Things happened in either through the same forces that created these distant mountains uh, or th and or through water erosion or just naturally look uh, a lesion in the surface of the earth happened or this portal to another plane opened and changed and changed things you know we might have had even a big central lake area here but what's going to end up happening is we have this pocket that opens up let's have this act as kind of like a have this act as kind of like a fissure almost and so the earth got a boo-boo uh, a bit of a compound fracture here As the stone melted and erupted forth. In fact, we can even say it was from from two different areas here. And you know what we just did? Uh, so and this is the place where it was sitting. This might have been what sunk or what was degrading from the top as well as eating into from the bottom. Remember... We have an NPC or as a villain character representing a holiday that talks about corrosion and acidification and the breaking down of things. This is a natural extrapolation that we can tell through scientific geology or just through folk stories from what our people can look around and see. And now we have a big old volcanic oopsie doodle. Uh, that just happened. And now look at this. Oh, boom. Nice, huh? Here's our igneous rock. Our igneous rock, our black rock. 
and from here too if you want to put in foothills or something uh you know so we had we had some buildup that comes down um and we have our central our central areas here that uh then would go further down into the earth where the uh magma became lava because it happens once it breaches the surface it's the, just a terminology difference <laughs> And now we're left with these uh, deeper calderas. And of course, if there's lava tubes and things, then we can also represent that if we want to have like an underground network of, uh, of tunnels, treat them like the rivers. You know, the, the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. You know, have them go here. Uh, we can even have, uh, we don't have to fill it in if we want to do this, or we can use dotted lines. There could even be a big, uh, chamber here. So maybe it actually came up in this central area, and then it just sort of, like, divided out. Into... Into, uh, into these two areas. And this actually goes even further down. And you can mark it with top uh, topographical lines or something like this. And then there's just whole series of, uh, of this. It, you know, lava could have spilled out the side here, or this could just be a vent that opened up. Things can just dead end also. You know, create little fun, little tenderly do's and, and make a story. Could have been another source, a smaller source here of ventilation. Could have collapsed on itself. Could have, uh, um, you know, why didn't it breach? Maybe it just uh, never could under the weight. So here's our uh, here's our calderas that go even further, and we already have uh, this series of tubes. And don't forget, our water is still running. Our water doesn't care that there was a bunch of lava here. Now, what's going to happen? If uh, if this area is raised, and this area is raised over here, this could very well end up clogging up the waterworks. We already have two deeper areas of water, else it wouldn't be running in this direction. D does this make sense so far? This is already low-lying territory. And that could mean because the water's not going to stop pouring down off the mountain. It's going to get backed up. It's going to clog. It's going to travel slowly. And you know what that creates, boys and girls? That creates a swamp. A major swamp. And either this water or the swamp water could even flow through some of these tubes. And you can color code the tubes if you want to. In fact, we could even say, what if one of these... Uh, whoops, haha, <laughs> I forgot. They're connected by the same color. S-M-R-T. If we want one of these calderas Sorry, I gotta break these off real quick If we want one of these to look like that pure blue fresh water because maybe nothing flows and it just sits there and it, it naturally filters, um, then we can have, boom, nice, a basin of pure water. This one, 
might be a basin of more murky water. It could even be saltier or have other elements that's not in the swamp because it's either been filtered or because other minerals uh, have gone through it. And so we have a different kind of water and, and we can label our, our tubes going through our volcano as we would like. And if you want to fill in the fresh water here, you can and just keep the... So we know this is fresh moving water and then it starts to stagnate here. And of course, swamps have a lot of little raised areas too. It's not all just water. Um, you know, it's grasses, little islands and sandbars. Um, you know, th things to think about, is it alkaline or acidic? Because that's the difference between a bog and a... Um, I think alkalinity and acidity is the difference between a bog and a marsh. I think that swamp is the general term and a moor is not quite a wetland, but it gets really wet. And, and, and think about that too. Do we have acidic water? Do we have alkaline water? How does that affect how does that affect the wildlife? How does that affect plants? Is there a is there a very lucrative mining operation? There's nothing saying these merfolk can't be mining the inside of this volcano. Can you imagine the gems or uh, stone or minerals that have been belched up from the belly of the earth? I mean, they're, they're probably making dwarves a little jealous with all the cool stuff that they can get from here. And of course, they're also creating more living space for uh, for themselves too by mining. I mean, we have like aquatic dwarves, lithium. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? According to this, my charge is complete. Wouldn't you say I've got lithium that holds everything it has ions and electrons aplenty it powers all my devices galore <laughs> google play apps i got a million of them but who cares no big deal I'm upgrading to an S20 Ultra Plus soon. <sighs> Is this your bard name, T Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know what? Inspiration can be found everywhere. All right, so we have the swamp that's been built up. It filters through here. And from here, if we have more lowland uh, that, that has happened because of any ripples or any, any other volcanic activity, um, you know, we could have also had... It, it doesn't have to be one lump. There could have been other little, um, you know, there could have been other little uh, volcanic uh, mounds that it came up here too, or just pillars of basalt. Um, you know, if you have an incident where, uh, if you have igneous rock that comes up through sandstone or through other uh, like sedimentary rock, igneous rock tends to be tougher. We're talking granite. Well, I mean, uh, you can say, look, pumice floats as a rock. I get it. But you have granite, you have basalt. And so what happens is these pillars cool. And the sedimentary rock erodes easier with time, water, sand, all of this. And what that means is you get these uh, sort of exposed volcanic chimneys or these little spires that naturally were the the lava that came up through the ground solidified the rock is harder the surrounding rock dissolved away and now out here <coughs> pardon me out here 
What if we actually have, and even coming up through the swamp, what if this is the obelisk? Or these were carved into obelisks? What if we actually have a little field of these volcanic chimneys? As the water continued to pour, continued to erode, continued to carry away, to carry away the weaker stone, we're talking a geological time scale. I mean, magic can do anything, so there's that too. But we could actually have a scattered field of these ancient volcanic chimneys rising up out of the swamp or even stopping up water where, where it did exist before. In fact, some of them might even still give off uh, steam or gases every now and a while. I mean, don't we all? <laughs> How is the earth any different? <laughs> so we have these, and this could also create over time, you know, other other little, uh, they're not a traditional foothill, but this can build sediment, and this could build natural, uh, natural like sandbars or walls of sediment that are helping to retain the water. And we can represent that by something here where, you know, we have this kind of buildup. Kind of comes down, flows around here. And it, it all just kind of gets pushed to some extremity. And the water's still going to filter through, but this is slowing up the water enough that bup, 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 bup. this is slowing up the water enough that this would count as a swamp because the water isn't moving quickly. So now we have swamp on both sides, swamp running through, filtering through the mountain. forgot to fill that port uh, that portion in here because now this all this sediment is washing is running into these these blocks it builds over time and we can still have a lot of natural riverscape that is still flowing. Uh, we could preserve this, we can alter this. Because you know what we do? We take our fill tool, we go to our grass color, and we we fill this in. We go, uh-oh, geologically, these rivers don't exist anymore. They could have been filled in, they could have dried up, they could be a series of ditches or gulches. Um, they could have been covered over and this is like an underground swimming area for the merfolk. Or, again, because these things change, the water might be busting through and flowing out from a couple areas. And now this is a newer river. It hasn't had time to form the dramatic oxbows because of the difference in velocity of the water when it goes around corners. And our, our newer rivers aren't going to be as wiggly because they're taking a more direct route and they haven't had time to slosh back and forth, accelerate, and exacerbate the curves. Because that's how you get an oxbow lake. And so we're just going to draw a couple little leakers here. All right, kind of boom. And this one goes out this way. And we'll even have, um, there's one down here still we didn't fill in, so let's do this. So this water got cut off and evaporated and filled in. And now we're going to have, oh, we're actually going to have this, uh, on, on the other side of the sandbar here, um, we're going to have this be a couple rivers that just sort of 
a big, fat, lazy river, but it's enough that, you know, wh whatever filters through here is just going to start moving because maybe, maybe down here, we're getting, uh, we're getting more action from gravity. Why not? This is, this is our territory. As a dungeon master... What, are your like are your players gonna be like that's stupid? Why do you have a fat river and two small ones? All rivers should be the same size. You're ruining my immersion. I'm not playing with you. I'm gonna find another friend or family member that's running D and D on a regular basis. Now these rivers are probably unchanged because this has been mostly unchanged with the protection of the mountain and the constant uh, and the constant source of things that are coming down here. So we can go through, we can fill this in here. And if we want to create other little sandbars, or if you want to create little islands of marsh grass, um, then you can come through here and you can make these little islands. Now, if you use that color here, if you're presenting this to your players, make sure that you're being consistent in some way. So if you like this color and you're actually making a bunch of little, little islands and reeds and and little high spots and, and things like that. You, you can come through here, fill them in. Bloop, bloop, or we gotta say bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. In that case, if this is underground, just as we've differentiated this water quality, let's make this pink. And this is representing that this is some kind of like a special water or that it's different. Or if, if this is open and it's the same water that's here, it's just that it's, it's exposed. Easy, ta-da. Tell the story with your colors and your shapes. Hey, Bronson, welcome. Uh, All right says a wizard did it. Exactly. And not just wizards, but miners and people over time as, as uh, humanoids, they've just changed the world around them. Uh, Golden, thank you for your compliment, too. Yeah, uh, it would be like a Delta uh, Death Angel. Exactly. How did our crooked giant revenge-seeking illusion using villain from the other night's workshop turn out? Very well. Uh, we have tied in all of the mythological figures into our setting and into the culture. <laughs> Here's our mountain. This could even be part partly mountain too. Here's our swamp territory. And of course you could fill in any other notable sandbars or, or reed stacks or whatever else you want here too. But now you've seen, now you've seen how you can create these maps easily. You are familiar with the natural history of what took place. You can explain, you can explain things to your players that come up that maybe you didn't plan for, but you're comfortable enough because you know the geological history. You know that right here, this was the old village. And uh-oh, this old village did turn into a Pompeii because this was ground zero. This was ground zero for the volcano. And this is where our revenge-seeking, you know, uh, figure from the past might emerge from as a, a dark shadow, as a dark shape probably flies out through any of these vents, out of these chimney vents. The lurker from below, the scary holiday figure. And if you want to put other little accents, you know, for rangers, druids, or just because you don't want this to be endless grassland, you know, if you think that, uh, you think that right here, really just hugging the mountain at its base, uh, there could be foothills, or maybe there's a forest, right? There's some water. Uh, it, it's recovered. It could be a pine forest that loves acidic water. And if we did, if we deemed that our water is acidic because of the volcanic influence, we're going to have plants that love acidity. Pine trees love acidity. And all of you out there might know different flowers and plants that thrive in acidic waters and soils. Pardon me. And we can go through and say, all right, so it, the trees can act as a, maybe a little bit of a natural border. So let's take the trees up this way and they'll kind of, well, they'll kind of taper here because they grow up to just the edge. Uh, but a lot of trees were destroyed uh, from the ash and the heat. So it hasn't taken over 
Uh, but there's been a lot of tree growth where there's been nutrients and water. Um, and, and so really, this forest is going to follow the water, and that's about it. Again, if your players say, this is really weird, why are your trees like this? You can tell them it's because the trees can only grow where there's where there's the water and the nutrients that were left after this area got nuked by heat and uh and toxicity and and just i i mean we just call that twitter um and and so we we have to recover we have to take a break from twitter so that we can actually live again and thrive as a species um Uh, if you want to add some real-world reason why the river setting can be rapidly altered, salt mine or deposits I was exposed to the water somehow. Yeah, so shifting minerals and stuff? Exactly, Bronson. Why is your nature like this? Eh, Druid did it. Ready to nap is back to thrive. Rose is like slightly... So, Azrael, there might be a special species of uh, of like swamp rose or something. Or like some sort of like mega flora uh, version. Uh, this swamp. If you want this to be, how about this? What if gigantic, gigantic uh, roses with just vines like as big around? Like you, you go like this, um, and like this is this is the stem of the vines and and uh, thorns that can impale uh, people and animals, and and they just like grow and thrive and act as like a natural uh, filter or absorption or they just have mutated to exist in this swamp you know take something like that are, are there special pines that like the acidic soil or the acidic water um, you know maybe they're all scraggly they're all just little things like trying to suck up whatever they can maybe if Bronson's talking about that uh, this is kind of a salty area um, you know, maybe there are trees that uh, that actually like the, the the salt, the electrolytes, because Brondo has what plants crave. And if that's if, if Brondo is the volcano, then this could be a very fertile area after it was scorched. <laughs> uh, you can watch an entire lake get swallowed. Look up Lake uh, Pegnor. Did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, can you give the quick synopsis on where it is and what happened, Bronson? <laughs> Those succulents are such suck-ups. There's a fun little tongue twister for you all from All Right. Oh, hi. Hi, cat. Well, there we go. Now, here's our region. Do you want to go and make a city map? Use use the uh, internal uh, lava tunnels as a road map or as major corridors or highways. Or take this and, uh, and determine whatever your scale is. I mean, really, is this one mile across? Is this 100 miles across? And... If you start with your imagination like this, don't worry about the scale. Just like when we make our settlement, our settlement can scale up or down from a farming village to an entire country very easily. Just get into a creative mood, start drawing, and then and then discover your scale. And you know what? Maybe the Vidalkin live in the purified water. And while there's a lot of swamp water, that's where that's where the merfolk live. And of course, the Vidalkin might live atop the uh, the ancient volcano too, and only deign to go in the water for short periods of time. Uh, maybe because they're intellectuals, they research the sunken city, um, or at least the rumors of it, trying to find ways to get there uh, to see if this monster myth creation exists. Create a roadmap the same way. Or use a random city generator if you want and apply it and just, like, lay it in one of the calderas. In Louisiana, salt miners accidentally drilled into the lake bed. As water flowed into the mine, it dissolved the salt, which opened up more room for the water to flow into, which dissolved more salt. Oh. That's... 
You know, Bronson, I kind of wonder if a similar but different predicament under Centralia, Pennsylvania will happen. In the end, there was almost no lake left. It swallowed boats, barges, equipment. Oh, my goodness. And uh, I, I would urge, if you're like Centralia, Pennsylvania, what's so... What's so interesting about a play, you know, it sounds like a quaint, uh, like Eastern seaboard town. Uh, I mean, clearly there would be no Silent Hill like, uh, spookiness that could exist in a town called Centralia. A C E N T R A L I A. Yeah, Azrael. Yeah. Sorry, my, my buddy here needs a good old noggin scritching. All right. We got we got a good amount of hair off. You gonna survive? Do you need the slick brush? Oh, okay, here we go. Butts in the air. However, this is an open bottle of drink by my computer and you are getting in, in a really rubby mood. So we're gonna put this cap on. All right. How do you grow so much fur? I slick like a full brush off of him every day. It's like a tissue box. Like you, you scrape the hair away and it just keeps coming. Please don't knock my monitor over. Oh, he is so rubby. He's in a mood right now. Now, take inspiration then, like what Bronson was talking about, with water uh, causing sinkholes and, and uh, all, all sorts of sub subsumation um, of the landscape. Even combine it. If we're building on a volcano, take the idea. Uh, take the idea of Centralia, Pennsylvania, where you know anyone living here is exposed to this constant stream of fire and smoke, uh, and whatever other sort of toxic elements. Uh, yes, uh, he is right here for you to see. Volcano erupted, coated the land in ash, acidified the lake. Many years later, the acid balanced. Trees enthusiastically grew in the ashy, nutrition-rich soil. And now the trees are acidic and deadly. Yet, it changed the local wildlife. And, and that event is what turned our merfolk into Vidalkin, or at least a portion, who then came back and, you know, asserted themselves. They reconquered this, this area. Uh, you know, both in the water and out of the water. As we randomly rolled that Vidalkin were the dominant race and uh, uh, one of the varieties of Zendikar merfolk were the uh, minority race. And with the, the relations being the dominant race were the conquerors. Uh, uh, Bronson, uh, what you had missed just before this, we went through a settlement worksheet with some random prompts. I'm not sure I, I get what you're saying, Fart Lord. And part of this evolution, or part of even the geological events, if it wasn't about plate tectonics and sublimation, uh, is this permanent portal to another plane of existence we randomly rolled up. We have this culture where there is an oligarchy of these Vidalkin are rulers, but there is some contested leadership and fighting. And a scandal threatens powerful families here, too.
We started with the random personifications of the holidays. We then took the next step with those considerations. We built our settlement with random roles, the considerations in our own imagination. Then we simply are painting this scene. Uh, no, we didn't roll where it leads because we could just leave that open to be where we'd want it to be. Uh, going to the Feywild would make sense, uh, considering our mutated sort of Avenger of the Gods, uh, who also, like what we were talking about, uses acid as a form of torture and as a way that we were explaining the reduction in the light of the day, you know, why we're losing daylight, as uh, this kind of, if you remember, we're talking about uh, Persephone and Hades. Um you know, explaining seasonal shifts. And so we might have a fey creature born of this portal that could have been uh, mutating the Vidalcan from Merfolk or, and or that's what spawned uh, through this trickery or the fickleness of gods or the fey, this uh, evil holiday uh, creature or moral, uh, a representation of a moral that we are building a holiday around as well uh, that explains the solstice. Uh, explains the, the shortening and lengthening of days. And uh, Bronson, it all came together really, really well. Despite the random nature. I, it was spooky how this is working from our methodology. It writes itself. Capital M, capital M, I, W, I. Uh, from here, then, a couple other little tips. If you want to do topographical lines, remember, come up with whatever consistent scale. This could be a difference in height of 20 feet or 100 feet. It's up to you. And this is going to represent the slopes of things. Because the distance between the lines is consistent. And so what you're going to see here... If this is 20 feet, if you're climbing the mountain from here to here, this is only a 40 foot rise in elevation. But if you look over here, we've gone 60 feet up. If this were to continue, this is indicating that uh, this is a higher, like a wall or a steep slope where this is a more like a shelf, a big shelf that exists. And we can do that with uh, grays or something else over here too, if you wanted to represent that. And where this could come in handy as well, I'll show you, if you have uh, put in some sort of little uh, indicator as well. So if we put little chevrons here, this is showing, if you can see, I'm, it's a bright red, so maybe I didn't choose the best color that all of this is going up. It's going up to a point. If we come over here now and we start drawing, um, let, I'm going to fill in our calderas and we can always redraw it or uh, re, repurpose or structure what we need to do. Um... In fact, I'll, I can even show you how we can make the Caldera Lakes using our topography. One second here. The paintbrush tool would not be cooperative. But I also want to use this light gray for our topographical lines. All right, so here is our volcano range. Let's use light gray and let's indicate some sort. Oh, that's probably too thick. That's about two C's thick and I actually need a traditional CK thick. There we go. So we come over here.
All right, now you see, do you see where I'm building up to a peak here? Now it's going to get super steep. We're going to have a lot of lines really close to each other because the, the elevation is the same between them. But because the lines are closer together, it's indicating that we have a higher rise than a higher run. So now we're getting up to like a, a, a very steep area. And we come over here. And we can do the same thing. And maybe this one, this, this was a low key, right? We'll have this one be like a low key caldera, you know, kind of gentle, not too difficult, you know, a couple lines and here we go. You know, maybe it gets a little, it gets a little steeper over here for some reason. And then we kind of just keep it chill. But then we come up here. And you it doesn't even have to be circular. If you want to just build it like this, you can. Because this is indicating then that this is a flatter area. So do, do you see what we've done? Uh, do you see what we've done here? Oh, if I missed... Uh... The Fae can be the personification for the lols, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're using Fireball, and so Refry might not, uh, yeah, so I, I guess if Refry comes out and like, are you Refry? And you say, ha, I debated, that's probably a trick. So yeah, if you want to see better, a Fireball will definitely light up the area, ready. Uh, so there are two, I guess there's two ways you can go about this. One is that, uh... Uh, one is that if you want this to be more of like a sheer, like, you know, there's really no drop, then you can just color the Caldera Lake in the middle with the water that you want to represent. If you want that to be the blue, then just uh, fill it in there, and then it's just, boop, it's a build up and a drop down. If you want to reflect, uh, if you want to reflect uh, more, then we are going to do this. So that was one, two, three, four. So we're going to have a steep drop. Two. Three. Now you see how steep this is? The lines are really close. Four. And then. And then. No, and then. And then. No, and then. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Uh-oh, why are we doing this? Interesting. And we're doing this because... One, two, three, four... One, two, three, and that's the fourth one. Let's use our red and indicate that we're going up, up, three, four, and now this is going down. And if you don't angle it, then having it be... Uh, like cardinal. So th this might be better if we just express it like this. So that these are always going up. One, two, three, four. And then we can use a different color. We can use something like pink and say that these one, two, three, four go down. Because elevation is measured up and down alike. So having these hash marks will help your map readers. And we come over here, and of course this continues, well, that's not too bold. 
this continues to go down, and we used a different color to represent that. Hey, you can still use pink if you want. Down and down even further. So that this is whatever, 40 feet down or 60 feet down, whatever you want the scale to be. So we have up, we have down. Over here, this is only going up from what we can see on our map. And you know what? If you want to give topographical lines everywhere on your map, hey, do so. Indicate hills. Build 3D terrain with a 2D representation. So I guess actually I, I would flip it because th this one would be the wider one. Uh, if we want to go, let's go one, two up, one, two down. Now we're back at base level, uh, which would mean that we can color that line blue because now we're at water level again. We'll fill this in. And we're going to have this be broad. You know, so it'll have a shallow area. Pardon, a shallow area over here. But now we're going to show the depth of the lake. You know, kind of shallow over here. But then it's going to super... Right here. Right here. Oh, that, we're, we're getting deep, everyone. Boom. And use your markers once more. This is going down... Going down, going down, going down, going down, and going down. So now we can see that this is deeper than the rim. The rim, if this is only 20 feet apart, is only 40 feet above the swamp. You may want to change your scale, it's up to you. But then it dips back down 40 feet to water level. And you know what? If you didn't want the water to start, uh, if you didn't want the water to start till another 40 feet below the swamp surface, because you can do that, right? It, it forms a bowl. A bowl can hold lower water on the inside than what's on the outside of it. Then come through and color this black and light gray instead. Because you're still building this visual representation. I got to change the color of the water. You're still building the visual representation of the water for your players to read. They're able to follow along and see what's happening. But in this case, it's resting at uh, at water at like swamp level and it just sinks down further than the swamp. I'm going crazy on this caldera, Bronson. Peekaboo peek. Uh, Azrael Stream Elements had a, a problem where their points were nuked, like they lost their database or something. And uh, they actually had to revert uh, that sort of... Oh, actually, I, I, now that I think about it, they had to revert back to November, I think. Uh, I had reset everyone's points for the new broadcast year, and uh, so everyone had zero, but now that's actually been reverted. So actually, I might need to nuke everyone's points in between this week and next. But, um, you know, if it's not Quay, Bronson, I think it's uh, exclamation point Wark, W-A-R-K. And I think that gives a, I think that gives a, uh, a Chocobo response. Uh, Ready to Nap says, can throw a Masada fortification up there too. I'm not sure what that is. Ah, there you go. So this time the Chocobo wasn't impressed and just gave you an ellipses. So yeah, you can now go through, you can detail tributaries. Uh, you can detail where sandbars and read uh, patches and all sorts of stuff are. Uh, you can zoom in, you can develop your street level society, your the map, because you know what's around. You can consider, all right, there's giant roses here. This is a pine forest. This is sedimentary rock. This is igneous rock. These are old volcanic chimneys that have been 
uh, that have been exposed after the eruption and all of the water and everything taking things away. And you could even say if you do that, whether or not you make more, uh, whether or not you make more of uh, the topography, these rivers, this could even turn into some interesting white water rapids or some waterfall country. Because if the water from here or if the land has been sort of scooped or washed away, it's, it, it's downhill from here. And so you can have fun, uh, you know, have getting these ideas or drawing these ideas because now you have all the prompts in place to do so. You can think about, do they grow rice here? Do they, do they even grow grains? Do they keep any cattle? Or is it more of an aquaculture for plants and animals? If maybe wild plants and animals aren't to their liking or taste. Um, you know, do they mine? And if so, what do they mine? What are their imports and exports? We see that there's rivers. We see that there's swamps. There's a big fat river here. This could be a source of trade. Are there highways? Let's use orange. We haven't used orange on here. And if you think that there should be a highway, maybe one that follows the river, because hey, I mean, you need water when you're camping on the road and, you know, to relieve yourself or to take barges up and down. And sometimes that's uh, you know, you can just take the land route or maybe you tie a barge to a donkey and you, you sort of, um, you know, go along the river. But now draw your highways and you know what the major landmarks are. You know that this is here and if you want a highway to go through one of the chimneys, kind of like how there's uh, some roads in California that, or is it, uh, in, maybe not California, in uh, Oregon and Washington that go through the trunks of uh, giant uh, redwood trees have a road do that you know call this like the call this like the swamp perimeter road maybe it's only used by the military uh to guard or maybe it, it, it's a way to circumnavigate this place for traders it's on the dry side um but you know what people have taken the liberty to go through the volcanic chimneys and so you can make a little uh you can do it with uh dashes or you can do it with um solid lines you know, use a color that uh, that you haven't used before. Orange is really good for this. And now you know your trade routes. And you know, uh, you know, military choke points if you want to run something wartime or to set up an ambush or where bandits or highway robbers uh, might exist. You know, so we have this and then this comes down uh, probably on the edge of the swamp. And so we actually have a highway and we're going to take it through here. And we're going to have a bridge, bloop, come over. It kind of skirts around until we get to the major river. And there's probably a ferry station here and a ferry station here. And the road will continue down this way, but there's no bridge. Unless you want to take the sandy path across or you want to cut in through the swamp. So that said, the, uh, the road may continue this way cut through the woods and proceed I don't know to the mountains or people want to travel in the safety of the shadow of the mountain so any sort of trade coming in from the east would come up this way instead so you have shelter and supplies on the long road uh, if you want to have a, a ferry service like I talked about then do this. Um, take uh, this orange should stand out. Th this lighter orange. No, that one's not going to stand out in the light blue. Um, we used reds and pinks. I, we, you can reuse colors if you want. We use this one. There we go. So there's a water route. And if we have a swamp route, maybe bridges, natural or otherwise, um, maybe... There's a ferry route or a, a swamp boat route that sort of does some some little island hopping until you finally reach one of the tunnels if you wanted to, to put the tunnels in the volcano as well. But now you can make these decisions because you have the broad area. You have a basic understanding of how this place came to be because we started out with a flat grassland. And then, you know, like the creators we are, we made mountains rise. We lowered the lands. We, uh, we scoured the earth with fire and quenched it with water. 
Uh, we've deposited gemstones and minerals, and we've created uh, we've created intelligent beings that are trying to eke out a life, but fight amongst themselves or are under threat because of uh, you know various divisions of philosophy or uh, racial features. Congratulations, everyone! And look at this. This is an MS Paint. I used basic colors in a basic canvas. I, I'm not an artist. I'm not a geologist. And, and look at everything that we did in the course of about an hour. And it would have taken a lot less time if we weren't just kind of goofing off at the table either. You can do this, and if you hand this to your players, you know, you could write some labels in, and you can make secondary maps. You could zoom in and clip this and then make the city map, or the un, you know, or you can copy this, and then you can uh, take the same black blob, and then you can make the street map of the lava tubes. Uh, you could make the roadmaps, uh, whatever else that you'd want to make them. And um, let's see if we're going here. There, maybe there's a, an entrance here to one of the tunnels as well. You know, we, we do a little, a little hopping here and there. Maybe the road will go this way, right? You want to get in and out of. But you've empowered yourself with uh, decisions and choice making. And everything we've built to this point organically interfaces with all of our prompts so we can tell a unified story and if we need to make a flash decision because i don't know our, a player had a question then we can make that decision with the thought that we've put in here and everything still clicks together uh spreadsheets um they originally were open office and I recently moved to uh, Microsoft Office. The spreadsheet for the character, uh, for the manual of uh, player character golems, uh, this is a this is a Google document. Uh, Masada or Metsada or Fortress is an ancient fortification in the southern district of Israel situated on top of an isolated rock plateau akin to a mesa. It is located on the eastern edge of the Judean desert overlooking the Dead Sea 20 kilometers east of Arad. Herod the Great built two palaces for himself on the mountain and fortified Masada between 30... I feel, I feel like I should have known this. Uh, between 37 and 31 BCE According to uh, Josephus, the siege of Masada by Roman troops from 73 to 74 CE at the end of the first Jewish-Roman uh, war. I imagine that will continue. Whoa, power level? Thank you for the gift to All Right. That's so generous of you. The pics And so, yeah, ready. Just as we used references for a volcanic cal uh, caldera, um... Uh, in this sense, then, if we look up, um, nope, we want to do this. So here we go. Oh no, Bill Witchcraft, we're using references again. Ew, gross. Not references in art. And all of this, too, remember, we have a culture of death and even renewal, but the ending of things, too. And while we're making winter holidays, I mean, this could very well get snowed in every winter. You know, we drew a nice vivid map. Doesn't mean all this can't be covered in snow. We have the death of a mountain. We have a death of a landscape. We have the rebirth of a mountain. We have the rebirth of a landscape. We have death of water and rivers. We have a glass blower who probably blows glass from all of the the silicates and all of the other things that are come up through the ash, ash, uh, through the sands. 
um, or even uh, even that mythological figure might even uh, work with obsidian, a volcanic glass. We create things, we destroy things because glass is making beautiful singing instruments. Glass can also be easily broken, depending on the glass. All of this is in our culture of death. And when we have a solstice where the nights get long, and if you live in a caldera, your sunset happens earlier because if you live, if you live on the interior of the crater, your sunset could be an hour or two before the sun actually sets on the horizon because light isn't getting through the lip of the crater. You live in more darkness. The, the cold that might happen is either offset because of thermal springs or something, or the top of the caldera might even freeze over and, and people beneath it have to chip out or uh, something along those lines. We have this theme of acid and erosion as well with our, with our holiday prompts. Everything here supports the culture and the people who are living here and who have developed here and that we can create stories around. So yeah, ta-da everyone. We did it, huh? we did it. All right, we've also, we've made it to almost 3 a.m. I'm gonna have to hang up the old, uh, the old mouse. I had a very early day today uh, for reasons why I had to cancel uh, last night's workshop. Um, and so I want to thank you all for being here, but I need to catch up on my Z's. I took a little nap, but it was just a couple hours on top of only the couple hours I got. Uh, so I'm going to snooze. We're going to come back on Saturday and we're going to develop our holidays with foods and taboos and celebrations and colors and decorations. And we're going to have a blast doing it. Well, tell your wife, uh, hello as well. And, uh, I really appreciate you, uh, you being here. Um, so come with me over to D&D &D time. We're going to raid them. Great group. I think they're just finishing up, but let's give them a, a good raid uh, for their three one shots. And uh, I hope you all sleep well. I'll see you on Discord and I'll see you all around. All right, everyone.